Uh, this is my life coach, Leanne, and this is how she sits during our sessions. Uh, no table between, you, and that's really weird, because whenever you get in with a client, right, the first thing they do is sit across from the table from you. So the very first thing I do is ask if I can move to their side of the table, and I ask them to face me and sit knee to knee, <laughs> just like we did. And we know immediately this creates an intimacy that you do not have when you have a big table or a whiteboard um, between you. And the use of silence as well, of course. We talked about that. But another thing Leanne does that I love is she puts her palms up, which I think is a very subtle but wonderful gesture of receiving. Uh, but what else is important is you need to let your people chat. When you're working with your audience, they've had a big day. They have to remove themselves from that day, and the first step is just letting them be themselves and talk about things in an unstructured way. And uh, a real-world example, I showed you the, the walking storyboards. We were trying to figure out a great way to have um, kids do passwords. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had to work with a, a 7 to 11-year-old and remember passwords on a computer. So we came up with some ideas. We, we drew them up. One of them was about an amulet, uh, where you actually would wear something and tap it to the computer. It would unlock your, your web page. We started building low-tech prototypes for it. And after we were all done that, we did big ideas. We went forward. Um, then the high-tech stuff started to come out. So the next prototype was actually uh, we did 3D modeling. with uh, The adults did this you know, between sessions. Uh, actually, my grad assistant did it for 30 days in a row. So that was pretty awesome. Um, trying to print them out on a MakerBot. We then uh, took RFID chips, which are the little radio frequency things that you can We slapped them on the back, programmed them up on the computer, um, and actually had the kids wear their amulets and be able to tap phones and such that would actually then load up their pages on the computer. And we're talking about that. So we're, this is early stage, but this is where we're going with it. Um, just a way that we're working with our audience in the design of something pretty new. That was five Diet Cokes worth of <laughs> <laughs> caffeine. So um, really, the idea here is, is the following. That first, what we do is we really try to mention, here's why we do any of this stuff at all. And so let me just, uh, you, I think, would probably have pretty compelling arguments. So one thing is that, hey, we know that you can have something that's a really shiny object that looks just like the other shiny object, but it might not do as well as the others. And so we all know this, and we're so thankful for Apple for reminding everyone that, hey, you should actually think about the UX and the whole process and the service design and everything else. And so that's one piece that we try to do. The other is um, that we try to say, hey, you know, you can have this awesome product and it can be so cool, and, but we want you to kind of keep innovating because we don't want your, your building to look exactly like this after a while. So, so it turns out, right, so, so that's actually Polar is now going to be a, a, a startup center, uh, it turns out, but we want you to keep innovating. So hopefully those two things are motivating enough for them to be like, well, gosh, we need to do something. Shit, this guy's in the room, why don't we ask, see what he has to say? And so, so okay, let's talk about it. Um, so, so maybe I can just ask for your help here too. So, so w just really quickly, what do you think? Um, so just, uh, super fast. What do you think user experience is? Shout it out! Wow, one bit. Okay, stuff that works. The user needs. Okay. Facilitating interactions. Okay, let's keep moving. So it could be. Thank you so much. That was really great. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. OK, that first of all, um, I think there's lots of dimensions to user experience. And it was really interesting, actually, to hear uh, um, Steve and his panel, and, and the other Steve, and Christine. All of you were talking about these ideas on different levels. So one was on super high problem solving, decision making kind of things. Um, sometimes we were talking about very sensory things, like staring into someone's eyes. And, and I think there's some middle ground there that's really interesting. And so that's why I wanted to talk to you a little bit about all these different levels of representation that we can think about as we do design and think about um, user experience. Uh, when we work with big data, you know, often we want to put things in tables and spreadsheets. And I've walked into user interviews with um, clients who are like picking lint off of their blazer instead of reading our spreadsheet because it's super boring to read a spreadsheet. So I've also walked into future client interviews with these cards. And then um, you know, our client would say, oh my god, this email, I knew it was contributing the most to ROI. But now I have proof, and I'm going to tell my manager, and he might tell another one of the managers in the company. So that's how you start making uh, data desirable. 
cards make data scannable, digestible, and bite-sized, and shareable. So when data is shareable, it's very, very sellable. So finally, going back to our mountaineering analogy, for us as practitioners, it's about how we work and how we engage each other in our community to get into the flow state. For the customer or the client, it's about the process, <clears throat> excuse me, of working together. It's the combination of our skills as practi practitioners and the challenge that they bring to the table. Finally, for the end user, it's about the experience. Literally, it's about the flow of the application of the site. It's intentionally designed so the user can find the same balance that we find in our work and hopefully that the client finds in working with us.